I hope everyone can see my presentation. Um, first of all, I would like to apologize beforehand for my voice and the uh, probable uh, blowing of my nose. I woke up this morning with uh, what I think is the flu. So uh, I'll try to pretend that I'm feeling fresh and happy. Um, I'll be talking today about uh, access to self-employment for foreigners or uh, the uh, professional card. Um, I've tried to keep this uh, presentation uh, short and concise uh, and not too lawyerish, which is uh, not always uh, easy for a lawyer. Uh, first, we'll go over, that's the, the only lawyerish part, I promise, the relevant legislation and the general principles. Then I'll uh, talk about the exemptions, so um, situations where you are exempt of having a professional card, the conditions for uh, obtaining a professional card, the procedure, the required documents, renewal process, and then uh, we have time for the Q&A. So first, relevant legislation. I've just put them here uh, for you to see. Um, they're only available in the, the official languages uh, of Belgium, so um, they're pretty lawyerish, I, I would say. So I've tried to put the, the, the general principles down here. Um, and one of the first principles is that any foreigner exercising a self-employed activity in Belgium, either as a natural person or with a legal person, or any other organization without legal personality, must hold a professional card. Uh, what do we understand under self-employed activities? These are all activities not covered by the employment of foreign workers, um, services provider under authority, so, so employees, in fact. Um, in the independent activities, therefore, include both temporary services and the opening of a new company or operating headquarters. The, the law, the legislation that I uh, showed you before, aims to strike a balance between the aspirations of foreigners who wish to engage in that uh, self-employed activities in Belgium and the economic, social and cultural interests of the country. That's how they put it nicely. Um, when issued, the professional card will often be for an initial, initial probationary period of two, two years. In my experience, uh, the files that I handled, I always get one for two years. And, and in any case, uh, it can be issued for a maximum of five years and it can be renewed. Um, and the professional card itself, itself states the professional activity for which the card was obtained. That uh, concludes the lawyerish part. Now, exemptions. So certain categories of foreign nationals may be exempted from the requirement to hold a professional card. This may be because of the nature of the profession, the nature of their right of residence, or the implementation of international treaties or the existence of a measure of reciprocity. Um, I'll list all the existing, existing exemptions um, and if you have doubts whether or not you are in, in that certain scenario, we can always discuss afterwards or, or, or check on uh, offline. The first exemption is for foreign na na nationals, sorry, who are holders of a valid identity card for foreign nationals or of a valid certificate of registration in the register of foreign nationals. And this is important for an unlimited period. So this is for permanent stay, so a five years card. Then uh, citizens of a member state of the EER, so uh, member states uh, of the European Union plus Iceland, Norway and Liechtenstein, and also provided that they establish themselves with them, so uh, the spouse or the legally cohabiting partner or descendants or ascendants of those uh, persons. Then Swiss nationals also exempt, uh, spouse or legal cohabitant of a Belgian national and provided that they're also settling with them, the descendants or ascendants. Then uh, refugees, of course, that are recognized in Belgium. Um, foreigners who are legally executing a self-employed activity in another member state, EU member state, and who want to perform a uh, service in Belgium. To clarify a bit, uh, that constitutes any natural person, so either an EU national or a legal entity established in an EU state that offers or provides a service. 
And this also applies to third country nationals, so non-EU nationals established and providing services within the EU. Important to note is that if that foreign self-employed person wants to open a new establishment in Belgium, the exemption does not apply and then a professional card must be applied for. Now, I'm noticing that this sounds uh, lawyerish again. So uh, if that's unclear, just let me know at the, in the Q&A section. Then also exempted are spouses or legally cohabiting partners, partners of self-employed persons um, in the scenario where they assist or replace him in carrying out or her in carrying out self-employed activity. So um, this is the spouse that that works together with the self-employed person. The the meewerkende echtgenoot. It's called in Dutch. I'm not sure how it's called in French. Uh, and then uh, also foreigners who legally reside in another EU member state and who come to Belgium to provide a service as a service provider. So that's any natural person, citizen of an EU member state or a legal person established in a member state that may offer or provide services in another EU member state. Again here, uh, pay attention. They are allowed to work to provide those services in Belgium without a professional card, but they do need a professional card when they want to establish themselves in Belgium as uh, self-employed persons. There are <laughs> more exemptions. Uh, foreigners on a business trip in Belgium, if they do not have a main residence in Belgium, and uh, the business trip has to follow certain con conditions. It uh, must not last longer than three consecutive months. It is for their own account or for the account of the company of the foreigner. And it has a, uh, one of the following purposes. So either visiting professional partners, researching, developing uh, professional contacts, negotiating, concluding contracts, participating in fairs and exhibitions, with a view uh, to presenting or uh, selling the projects that they uh, produce, Partici uh, participating in boards of the directors or general meetings of companies. And then uh, another exemption is uh, foreigners who give conferences in Belgium, also not having main residence in Belgium and their stay does not exceed three consecutive months. Uh, I promise this is the last page of uh, exemptions, but you, you see that there's a lot of situations where a person does not require a professional card. Uh, foreign journalists, when they're not residing in Belgium and journalistic activities in Belgium, again here, do not last longer than three consecutive months. Um, foreign sportsmen or women and their self-employed accompanying persons, again, no main residence, activities do not last longer than three consecutive months. The same for foreign artists and uh, their self-employed accompanying persons. Again, no main residence. Ac activities should not last longer than three consecutive months. Um, foreign students that are doing traineeships in Belgium as part of the studies also exempted from professional cards. And foreigners who are doing an internship in Belgium, is if the internship is approved by the competent authority within the framework of development cooperation or an exchange program based on reciprocity. So there needs to be a treaty there between countries. And lastly, foreigners registered as a lawyer or as a trainee lawyer with uh, the Bar Association in, in Belgium. Then the conditions that uh, need to be met uh, in order for you to obtain a professional card. First of all, uh, they will check the right of residence. So. Uh, the region will check, uh, either the Flemish, the Walloon or the Brussels region, will check whether uh, the applicant has a valid residence in Belgium or in the country where uh, he or she is submitting the professional card application. Then there is also uh, the requirement of compliance with re regulatory obligations. Um, the region checks whether uh, the applicant or his or her company have mastered the basic knowledge of business management and any professional competences required to enter that profession and whether they comply with the other obligations specific to the status. And to this end, the applicant uh, should attach uh, in the professional card applications all relevant attestations they have received uh, from uh, the enterprise counter. Uh, I'll explain that later. Uh, important to note here is that um, this obligation 
uh, has been uh, abolished in the Flemish region. So there's a difference in uh, procedure there or in required uh, conditions and, and documents when it comes to the Flemish region. And then lastly, uh, the region will also check the benefit of the project. Uh, so they will see what the economic interest is. Is there job creation involved, uh, productive investment, favorable, favorable economic effects for Belgium, for other companies established in the Belgian territory, opening of markets, rare, innovative or highly specialized activities, filling an unsatisfied or insufficiently satisfying need. This all comes from the legislation. In short, you need to convince the region that uh, the company you want to set up or, or the, the self-employed activity you want to start performing, that it's going to be profitable. Um, and, and you can provide, uh, and I'll show you that later, uh, plenty of sufficient uh, supporting documentation for that. Um, if the applicant uh, wants to perform the activity on his or her own account, they must present uh, themselves at the enterprise counter. It's ondernemingsloket uh, of or guichet d'entreprise in Dutch and French. Uh, upon receipt of the professional card, they need to obtain an enterprise number. Uh, e even if you are self-employed as a, a natural person or as a company, you always need that enterprise number and you will have to be registered in the Crossroads Bank for uh, Enterprises. Um, then uh, also, if your activity requires, requires it, you must register with the VAT uh, department and enroll in a social insurance fund for the self-employed. Then if you're responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the company as a mandate holder, you must also have uh, the professional card registered in the Crossroads Bank for Enterprises through the enterprise counter. So, um, and I'll explain that later, you need to collect your professional card with the enterprise counter and they will uh, provide you with all the required documentation and information you need to comply with upon uh, receipt of the professional card. And also the, the mandate holder will have to register with a social insurance fund for self-employed uh, person, persons. Again, the enterprise counters, uh, and just to name a few, uh, that's Partena, Acerta, Liantis. Um, there's a lot, uh, and I'll provide a, a, a link to a website where you can uh, select them and, and pick the one you like most. Then uh, the procedure. Um, I've done my best and kept it to one page just to make it as concise as possible. The application, the professional card application must be done in person by the applicant, uh, him or herself, either at the Belgian embassy or the consulate uh, in the country of reg uh, origin or where the person legally resides. And in some cases, it's, it can be done from within the Belgian authority and then it needs to be done through the enterprise counter directly. You see here the link um, where you can select um, the enterprise counters. Um, what happens when, uh, to be honest, uh, when I assist, it's always from someone uh, who is uh, filing the application um, with uh, the embassy or the consulate. Um, what we then do is help prepare the application form and um, Either the person uh, selects the enterprise counter themselves, but in most cases they ask for our assistance. And since we don't really have a preference uh, of, of working with the enterprise counter, we always select the one um, based on the address. So if it's nearby the, the address where the person wants to uh, set up the company or where we believe that he might reside, and that's how we select it. So once um, the professional card application has been filed, it will be uh, transmitted uh, to the regional department. So um, within five days. Um, I, I, this is the legal requirement, but I've uh, had a file not long ago where it actually took a month because it was misplaced somewhere in the file. So it really is helpful if you have someone to coordinate and to chase the authorities to make sure they comply with their own uh, legal processing times. 
Then once uh, the application is accepted uh, and approved, the professional card will then be issued through the enterprise counter that we selected. So the, the, uh, the regional professional card department will send the approval to uh, the embassy, but also to the enterprise counter. Next step then is to apply for a D visa at the embassy or, or consulate. Uh, I say there, if applicable, of course, if you're applying from within the Belgian territory, that's not necessary. And I've had this discussion with uh, with the Brussels uh, professional card department about the need for a D visa, because in principle, some people are uh, visa exempt uh, and can travel to Belgium without a visa. Uh, but they were really adamant and they didn't want to move forward with the file without the person collecting a D visa at the embassy. Um, so that's an ongoing fight uh, on my side. Then the validity of the professional card, that actually varies between uh, one and five years. In practice, as I said, it's two years, sometimes three years. Um, and in some cases, uh, it's five years if it's the manager of a large enterprise, although that's not always the case. And then it's one year if the right of residence is about to expire or uh, when they want to uh, do a verification of the profitability of the project. So when they're not certain about the project, but they do want to give you a chance and, and, and try for, for one year. Then um, I have a lot of slides now about the required documents. Um, this document checklist I actually took from um, the instructions from the Flemish uh, professional card department because they were very clear in what they wanted. Well, when you um, check um, the documents from the Brussels and the Walloon authorities, they keep it pretty vague. They say you can prove it with all supporting documentation. So I thought that was really helpful to see what in fact you need to provide. So first, uh, the general document uh, list. Um, the first item, and, and we assist with this, is simply a front page giving an overview of all the different documents that you have attached to the application form, to the application. Um, it helps the embassy to see I, it's just prettier and, and you help the embassy, which make them more lenient or more favorable. Of course, the supporting documentation is, is, is what they base their decision on. Then a certificate of good character or criminal record extract uh, cannot, be, cannot be older than six months uh, and it needs to be uh, issued by the country uh, where you're currently residing, uh, plus apostille or legalization if required. So um, just to clarify for those who do not know what uh, apostille or legalization is, um, legalization, for instance, you uh, get a police uh, record in uh, India, you then need to have it legalized by the competent um, 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 Ministry of Interior, it's in India, and then you have to legalize it um, by the Belgian Embassy. An apostille is actually a simplified procedure of legalization based on an apostille treaty, whereby it's just one step. Um, so that the the um, in India, which is the case, they are part of the APC treaty. The Ministry of Interior can simply apostille the document, and then it's accepted by Belgium. Apologies, I see that I uh, sounded lawyerish here again. Then um, also, you need to provide a proof of payment um, of applications cost uh, application costs of uh, 140 euros. Um, before COVID times, uh, you could simply pay it. Uh, when you uh, attended the, the the embassy. Now, for some embassies, there's uh, no personal um, appointment anymore, and then you just have to provide a proof of payment, um, which is accepted then. And then, of course, um, you need to provide a passport bio page or a copy of your residence permit uh, for the country where you are submitting your application. Then the specific required documents, um, an overview of your full CV and uh, evidence of relevant work experience. So, for instance, letters of reference, uh, recommendations, payslips, copy of employment contracts, anything that can um, support your work experience. Copies of any degrees that you've uh, that you hold, 
Uh, also proof of income over the last 12 months. Uh, again, can be proven with any documentation uh, on hand, pay slips, tax returns, bank statements, etc. Then also, um, and this is strict, but it, it does help your application. It makes a stronger application. Is a motivation letter in, in, in where you discuss following uh, subjects. So short overview of your project. Um, reasons why you want to select that specific region, uh, region as a hub for your uh, entrepreneurial activity. So, for instance, why do you want to base your company in, uh, in Brussels? Uh, knowledge of Dutch and French, depending on which region you uh, would base yourself. So, Flemish for, uh, or Dutch for the Flemish region, French for, for Walloon region, any of those for the Brussels region. Uh, or the efforts you are willing to make to learn this language. But of course, if you believe and if you can um, argue that uh, knowledge of Dutch or French is not required to be successfully operating your company, you must also explain this uh, in this letter. Um, relevance of your studies, uh, previous uh, professional activities, income you expect to raise, um, division of t tasks if there are other partners in the, in the company, um, if there are uh, social, cultural, artistic added values, put it in that letter. Um, and then also um, sufficient evidence of uh, all the above um, topics. In short, you have to um, convince the authorities of what you're trying to do. Um, this is something that we could help with, but of course, it's easier for the person themselves to 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 put all these topics together. Um, but again, not having this motivation letter does not mean the application will not be approved, but it makes a stronger application package. Then, um, and this is a specific situation. If you want to come to Belgium at the request of a current manager of a company that already exists in Belgium, um, we always recommend to uh, provide a, a motivation letter of that current manager explaining why the company wants to use the services of the applicant. Excuse me. Um, if there was a search for personnel or partners with the same qualifications or the same profile, um, proof of the search um, must be provided. Uh, and then it's also best to argue why these uh, individuals were not selected. Then uh, if you have or expect sources of income other than those generated by the, the proposed self-employed activity. Also explain this, provide evidence for this. You must be able to prove that you have sufficient liquid assets um, to make the investments intended and to support yourself and your family if they are accompanying you. Um, if applicable, proof of relevant experience with Belgium. For instance, if you have uh, degrees, uh, um, that you earned in Belgium, uh, potential clients in Belgium, um, trade par partners, etc. Uh, that also builds a stronger application. Then also very specific to the situation at hand. If you become active in a company that was created more than two years ago, then more than two years before uh, filing of the application. Um, also provide a recent balance sheet, profit and loss account, and if applicable, an explanation of the weak financial results of the company. Uh, I had a file um, once where we had to provide that um, and also convince the, the authorities that uh, we had a prospect of um, a profit coming up and they accepted the file. Um, also an overview of distribution of shares in your company. So if you actually set up a company, um, but that's something you can get from the, the, the KBO, from the, the cross point, the cross bank for enterprises that's easily collected. Um, if you're already doing business in, in another country than Belgium, uh, a copy of the deed of incorporation, articles of association, balance sheet, profit and loss account. And um, if you're founding a new company or taking over a company, or become active in a company established less than two years ago, uh, a business plan must be attached. And that business plan is very specific. 
you, you need to put in the personal details, product or the service uh, you're providing, the organization of the company, market analysis, um, financial plan, and a specification and estimate of job creation and investments. Of course, I, and that's what, what, I mean, I had to create a business plan too. It's not all uh, rock, uh, perfect science. So it's it's prospects, it's, it's sometimes guessing, but if you complete that document, do it as, as uh, best argued as possible because you're trying to convince the authorities that what you're doing will become profitable or will be profitable. And lastly, um, if established a new company, um, depending on what the type of company is, um, if, if you're a one man business, so a natural person, uh, you need to provide opening balance sheet and a bank statement of the company mentioning the investment amount. That's something you need to um, you need to have anyway when you go to the notary. Um, so that's easily available. Then uh, in case of partnerships, uh, deed of incorporation, opening balance, and uh, also that bank statement. If you are a freelancer or consultant, um, copies of contracts for services for services. Um, from which it appears that you will work as a freelancer. Um, pretty obvious. Um, again, very specific. Uh, you actually need to pick and select which uh, which uh, topic applies to your certain situation, and that's something we can help you with. Um, evidence dem demonstrating an innovating, innovative nature of the project or the service, if that's the case evidence of job creation in the own company that's always a winner i must say if you can can prove that for instance within the next year you need to employ uh, a person in belgium could, then you have good chances that the the application will be approved um information on intended investments also and uh, if you do import export there are specific questions you need to uh, answer and then to end the long list of required documents, um, you could also add a copy of purchase and sales invoices, contracts, cooperation agreements. In short, any documentation that could help um, convince the authorities of the profitability of your company, put it in. You can't have uh, too much documentation to support the application. Um, also, shortly, um, renewal, modification, replacement. Um, the renewal of the professional card needs to be um, submitted three months before the expiry of the validity. Uh, you need to obviously provide your current professional card and then uh, submit proof of fulfillment of tax and social security obligations in the previous years of validity of the, the professional card that's about to expire. Um, your accountant can easily assist you with that. Um, the card is generally renewed unless the self-employed person has not carried out the planned activity. So if, if you haven't been doing what you asked the professional card for, yeah, then they'll probably say, okay, yeah, we're not going to renew because you didn't do what we provided you the card for. Um, in case of interruption or cessation of activities, uh, you need to return the card to the the business counter that issued uh, the card, you need to confirm why you're, you want to interrupt or cease uh, the activities and needs to be done within eight days of uh, interruption of uh, the seizing of the activity. Here you go. Uh, I kept it as short and concise as possible and I didn't blow my nose. So if you have any questions, do let me know and I'll try to answer them. Thank you, Thank you. <laughs> I need to blow my nose now. To blow your phone. <laughs> Come. Does anyone have a question here? <coughs> I will share my screen uh, in a moment.
So no questions from your side. You can either use the chat box or unmute yourself and uh, and speak. So if I may, Massimo, I have a question. Can you still take that? Well, depends on the question. <laughs> yes, um, it's about residency. I, in my understanding, work and residency applications go kind of together. And we know that for the single permit application, we have the work authorization that goes through the region. And when it comes to the residency authorization, the file is transferred to um, the foreign office, which is a federal um, uh, authority. How mm -hmm. is the residency part um, handled for uh, yeah. professional card um, applicants? Yeah, good question. And I just realized that uh, I didn't focus on that when I talked about the procedure. So um, once the person has collected his D visa, uh, enters Belgium, uh, goes to the, the enterprise counter to collect his professional card, he or she can then uh, go to the town hall and start up registration like the, the single permit holder. Um, and, and then based on the professional card, a residence card will be issued um, normally with that same validity. So it's in principle a bit the same as uh, when you uh, file a single permit for an employee where you have the approvals from region and the immigration office and with those approvals and your D visa if applicable, you go to the town hall and start up registration and then you get your single permit. With the professional card, you, you go to the town hall with the professional card, with your D visa, start up registration, and then get a residence card based okay. links so, to the professional card. Okay, so the professional card is enough to apply for a D visa, while in the single permit um, scenario, you need to have the authorization from the foreigner's office to apply for the D visa. Yeah, but um, the, the the region also, uh, and, and I currently have a file for a UK national in the Walloon region, the region always checks up front um, with uh, the immigration office before okay. they issue uh, their approval. And I have a file now where it's taking a long time for the immigration office to confirm that it's fine for a UK national to come uh, to Belgium uh, with, a, I, with a professional card um, to work for nine months uh, at, a, at a project. So that's that will always be checked up front. Um, and then actually the visa issuance, is, it's a formality because um, basically the, the region will tell the embassy, please issue a D visa for this person. And then the person has to go there. Um, and, and pay uh, the visa app application fee, and then he obtains uh, the D visa. Okay, clear. Thank you. Hi. Yes? Hi, sorry, I, I have a question as well, actually. Uh, could I have, uh, or could we have a bit more information on the, on the timeline needed? Um, I know it depends, <laughs> but um, is there some kind of way we can, have some timeline. Um, <laughs> that's really difficult. And um, the problem is when I, 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 I always say, when I talk about timelines, I say in my experience, this is the processing time, but I cannot guarantee it. In principle, it's two to five months. Um, but I've had files where I, I got it in one month, but also that has to do with um, the supporting documentation. Um, and, and with me chasing a lot uh, after the authorities. But for instance, if you have um, someone who's becoming a manager or mandate holder in an existing company in Belgium, um, it's much more easier for the, the regional authorities to, to, to see what the situation is and, and to approve the, the professional card application. Um, Contrary to where someone who uh, wants to start from scratch in Belgium, um, because then they really are, are have to do more investigating. So I would say 
for cases where someone is taking up a high position, a self-employed uh, managing partner position in a company that is existing in Belgium already, where you can provide all the balance sheets and the, the profit and loss accounts of that company, I would say one to two months. If it's for someone who's uh, coming from, from outside of Europe, um, wanting to set up a, a completely new company, I would go for two to five months. Um, five months, I haven't seen that yet, but um, definitely three months. Um, and then I, I don't want to pick sides, but uh, in, my, in my experience, uh, in Flanders, uh, and, and that's also with single permits, it's uh, one Flanders, two Brussels, three Wallonia when it comes to uh, processing times. Um, so I think it, in Flanders, it's it's depending on the supporting documentation, it can be faster. I hope okay. that's uh, answering your question without guaranteeing any processing time. Yeah, no, sure, of course. And and is the visa included in this, or does the visa need to be requested afterwards? Well, the the visa needs to be requested afterwards, but the visa application, in principle. It can be issued on the spot, but it depends on the embassy and the consulate uh, because some embassies, it takes a long time before you have um, uh, an appointment and then you lose time uh, for weeks waiting for an appointment. If it's uh, not a busy embassy, uh, it can be easily done. I, I think I had one in, in Iran that was uh, straightforward and fast. So, But I would say in one week's time, it should be possible to obtain uh, the D visa, if not issued on the spot. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there more questions? Um, Maybe I have a last one that comes um, quite often. Um, do you see differences, like significant differences between the regions in how they handle uh, professional cards applications? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, now it's going to be me um, saying what my favorite region to work with is. With the Flanders region, I've been able to, before filing an application, already discuss the, the supporting documentation that we would include in the application file, just to know um, what the chances of success are, if anything is missing, if anything is, 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 is not sufficient enough. Mm -hmm. While uh, I've noticed, but I will always keep trying and, and simply ask, um, that with the other two regions, um, it's more, how can I say? Yeah, it's it's the way governments um, work. They will say, we can only uh, decide once we have seen the application being filed. Um, they are not really willing to already uh, dedicate time before an application is filed. Um, so there's, more more flexibility or more willingness to make sure a file is um, complete before you file it. On the other hand, with Brussels and Wallonia, if you file something and there's documents missing, they won't immediately uh, reject the application. So you would still have time to to provide uh, additional supporting documentation. But but I personally like the other way where you first check um the chances of success and if the file is complete or not uh or, or maybe tips maybe add this document maybe put this in um the, the way that flanders works that that's my personal preference is, is the way they work yeah thank you massimo that's interesting um do anyone else have um, other questions or remarks or experiences to share? Michael, I see Michael. Yes. Uh, yes, Massimo, thank you. Thank you very much for that very extensive presentation. 
I represent CHS um, Community Health Service, which, as you know, has a 24 7 helpline. Um, and to the benefit of anybody who might call us on this subject, um, one point be, being in Belgium uh, with the three different regions plus Brussels, <laughs> I would say that it is also important to specify where one should introduce one's application. I've been on the site of the enterprise organizations and mm -hmm. I see that in fact they're, they're all over the country. Uh, now whereas yeah. you might have a penchant for the efficiency of the Dutch speaking part of the country, mm -hmm. I would assume that somebody who's established in Liège for instance would have to introduce uh, yes. at an yes. organization in Liège. He couldn't, he couldn't go to Ghent for instance because he happens to know that they are they're much more efficient. Well, uh, so, so there's a difference. Eh? So you have the, the regional professional car department. So the, they are. So if you want to base yourself in Liège, you have to apply with the Walloon region. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. when it comes to uh, collecting the actual professional card, you can pick whichever enterprise counter you want. So if your company is in Liège, but you would prefer collecting the professional card in Ghent, because, for instance, you would be residing in Ghent, that's still possible. It's uh, it, it's not a, a regional thing because um, when you go to that link that I provided, provided I think it's also in, in available in English. You can select uh, either um, by by company. So so you select Partena, Certa, Aliantes, and then you see an overview of all their um, their the locations and email addresses. And that's something you need to uh, put in your application form. And that's the, the the location. That's the 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 office location, and the the enterprise counter that the regional uh, professional car department will use when communicating the approval. So that's that's separate from from uh, from region. Although of course I have not seen it before that someone who is setting up a company in, in the edge, um, I would always ask if we are involved. Um, if they have a preference, and, and most times they come back to me, uh, you pick uh, the one, and then I'll say, okay, where are you going to live? Uh, or, or, or then I base myself on the location of the company, and then I I simply provide suggestions, and then I still try to make the person pick because we don't have a preference. Um, they all are as good or, or yeah. as bad as the other one. So. Uh, yeah. I try to to not choose. Uh, of course, if they really want us to choose, then we'll choose uh, based on experience. Good, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Anyone else? <coughs> so maybe if not, we'll let Massimo go and take some rest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling better already. Oh, nothing better than work <laughs> to heal. <laughs> Thank you, Massimo. Thank you very much for uh, contributing to the session. Um, I think you all noted the email address where you can send the questions that you have. It's uh, immigration at brightexpats.com. Um, we always try to give first general information by email, but and and when it comes to the assessment of a specific situation, um, then then um, we offer consultation um, one hour consultation by phone, where Massimo is um, able to um, assess the situation, your file, your application, and give general guidance on the best uh, path to go. Um, I hope we will meet again on the 17th of June for our next session dedicated to expats entrepreneurs, hearing the testimonials of um, KBC Started Menti. Um, so for now, I wish you all the best. Uh, a very nice day ahead and I hope to be in touch again soon. Bye. Bye, -bye.